Azizu, 75, 155. 75 stands for 7.5 ton. 155 stands for the horsepower that it originally came out with. It's been modified. Instead of having dual wheels on the back, it's now got super singles, front and rear. So we've got the correct track. They're, they're both following each other. So when you go off-road, that's important that you, that you do that. It's got all-terrain warrior alloy rims, 19 and a half inch. And it's got Toyo M608Z tyres fitted to it. And those yellow things there are wheel nut indicators. When they're pointing at each other, you know your wheel nuts are tight. And if they don't point at each other, then you've got a problem. <coughs> I've painted these just so they're a bit easier to keep clean. Alloy wheels are a bit hard to keep clean. Uh, in under here you've got parabolic suspension, parabolic sp springs, along with, uh, we've taken out the rubber bump stops and I've replaced those uh, with the uh, Airman airbag and it's got uh, four stage Connie hydraulic shocks and uh, rear is currently set at 50% and the, uh, sorry front set at 50%, rear set at 75%. Back up under the front, I'll build a stone tray, bash plate, you might want to call it. Uh, that's protecting, if you have a look in there, you'll see the air conditioner intercooler there. And there's a bit of, a bit of uh, air conditioner piping around the side there that's got a cover over it. Uh, it's got a grill up in there to let air flow through and probably the most important thing is all the nuts are tack welded onto the back back of the bash plate so to take it off you've just got to put a rattle gun under it you don't have to worry about putting a spanner on the back of nuts to stop nuts from turning uh, Stowing on the front, oh, and uh, and the front diff. It's four. The truck's four wheel drive, obviously. And the front diff, we've had that front diff uh, diff center replaced uh, with a uh, locking front diff. Uh, works similar to the standard limited slip diff in the rear, except it's driven with helical gears. So when it detects slip, they lock up, and uh, both both tires will drive then. I've been playing around with the with the uh, pressures in the airbags and I'm currently running about 10 psi in the front and 15 in the rear Where, as I said with the shockies in the front set at 50% and the ones at the rear set at 75 on the front we've got an all-terrain warrior bull bar and I put a uh, 25,000 pound Sherpa winch uh, with the Kevlar rope on that got light force 24 volt halogen driving lights which I use of a night to drive down the highway and up the top we've got LED I'd call them bush lights I don't like to drive with them on the highway I think they're too bright and too white but they're excellent if you're driving through the bush of a night they light up everything front and side they're, they're good um, where to now oh okay um, on these these front steps I've made them detachable so that if you pull the pins step comes out and you gain about four inches on your approach angle um, same with these center steps they're just too low where they are when you go off-road so that just Increases the approach angle of the truck there gives you more clearance I have dug those front ones into dirt before and it will just tear off and destroy them. So That was the logic behind that And at the rear these rear toolboxes I made them 70 mil shallower and put that 35 degree rake angle on them just to give a bit 
bit better departure angle because I have squashed both boxes and I've had to repair them and that's when I and these boxes this one this ventilated one here I keep fuel jumper leads oil bar and chain oil that's it's ventilated with a little bit of insulation on there just to keep the temperatures down and uh, on the other side, I just keep tools and recovery gear in this one. And chainsaw. At the rear of the truck, we've got a uh, range of 17,500 pound winch. I've got a, re a recovery shackle there got two reversing cameras here one of them well when it, when the tow bars in one points directly at the tow bar and the other one when the camp is on I use that uh, on the on the dash so I can see behind me and there's also a spare tire here and we've also got parabolic springs on the rear and air man airbags on that which as I said we're running at about 15 psi uh, it's currently set up um, running at those uh, pressures for that camper van to be put on the back of it fully loaded it's at seven and a half ton uh, up the front here we've got raised breathers um, fuel tanks uh, rear diff front diff gearbox transfer case everything's got a breather raised and coming back to a filter point there um, we've got two fuel tanks, two 140 litre fuel tanks on it and you can turn those on and off crazy dogs um, with, a, with a switch on the dash you can switch from one tank to the other you've got a separate fuel filter for each a primary fuel filter and, and water trap at the bottom and they feed into the secondary fuel filter on the truck Uh, truck comes standard with an exhaust brake. Um, in here we've got an AOB air compressor and a 5 litre tank. So this is a, a air compressor that's capable of 160 psi. Uh, I haven't set it up at that, I've set it at 100 psi. And it's got a 5 litre tank there and it's also coupled to another 5 litre tank in behind the tray here. And that's a Sherpa Big Air and that uh, uh, gives free air delivery of 10 CFM, it's a 24 volt air compressor that gives a, a massive air which you need um, because they're big tyres I've got one outlet up in here, one air outlet there with a gauge so I can do both tanks at once isolation switch there for the rear winch the Sherpa isolation switches up with the winch itself uh, we've got our truck batteries here, two 12 volt batteries series up for 24 volts and these are AGM house batteries here, they're two 12 volt batteries hooked up in parallel. Uh, they're, they're charged off the solar panel which is on top of this tent, electric bunder top tent. It's got a 275 watt solar panel on top mounted there, to raise that, you just push this button and that gives you a, a double bed set up light inside it, two fans inside it and they're a fantastic tent and that's where our 14 year old son is going to be sleeping when we hook the camper on and go around Australia but uh, if you didn't want to have a camper you just want to use it to go away on the weekend then uh, this canopy over here fits on the truck this I've currently got it sitting on this tandem trailer so if you're just going to do weekends away you'd, you'd grab that canopy 
put on the truck, throw your kayaks on top, and then you've got a big empty tray that you can put whatever you want on it. You have a really lightweight setup. Uh, it'd be good, good camping for two people. Uh, moving back along here, uh, this is a little charge station and esky holder that I got set up here. And in under here, there's a switch that powers on a self I go. So I pull that switch, turns on the self I go. These other two switches are for camping lights. They're just very, very uh, low wattage, 16 watt LEDs. They're just cheap. I see a couple of LEDs have already blown. I think they, uh, well, some water's got into them. And here we've got self I go aerial on a bracket. So you can raise it up and down depending on uh, what sort of height you're in. Uh, pretty handy thing to have that bracket, I think. Uh, right here we've got uh, an Anderson plug and a trailer plug. Trailer plug connects all the trailer lights on the camper and the Anderson plug connects these two batteries, the 240 amp hour batteries here to the 240 amp hour batteries that are sitting in that Palomino 1251. And this is not a bad little spot when the camper's on to put a bit of firewood if you've got the camper on. Uh, keep a shovel here on the tray. Uh, down here below this step is where you adjust your airbag pressures. UHF aerial there, currently running 3dB. Couple of camping axes on this side of the tray. I'll just jump up in the truck in the rear of the cab and show you the setup in there. So up here we've keep an esky that holds a couple of bags of uh, ice. I've got a charger for the uh, DeWalt batteries for power tools and chainsaws. Got a couple of USB outlets there and a socket outlet there. Down here, there's a 1000 watt continuous inverter, 240 volt inverter, for charging things like laptops and whatever you want. Plenty of room back here for Will. It's actually licensed to seat four people across that back seat. Um, here, instead of having safety triangles, I have these couple of um, LED warning lights, and they just sit there. They're handy. They've got little magnets on them, so they just sit there and stick to that. Uh, I've got an Anderson lead there. I've got a couple of fire extinguishers, got a bottle jack. Uh, here I've got a couple of Victron chargers, so again I've got the side lights. Uh, amber, amber, there's, there's the one with the water in it. I'll probably have to replace that. Uh, this is a Victron 130 MPPT. Uh, charge controller for the solar panel on the roof. You see here I've set up a bit of a heat sink for them. They do they can run hot uh, Particularly this one back here. It's a DC DC 24 to 12 volt Charger and and, and that charger there charges the batteries off the alternator um, uh, Here I've got an Anderson plug for photovoltaic in so solar power in there for a mobile mobile sol solar panel and this isolator is for this DC DC charger. I have had some issues with battery drainage. I'm not sure why. I just put an isolator in there and that fixed my, my problems there. Um, I've also got a switch on the dash to turn it on and off. 
So you, I didn't want to get in a position if the if the truck batteries are low and the house batteries are low, you start the truck up, the alternator puts out 28 volts and this charger then says, all right, I can start charging, but you're only idling. So you, you don't want to be drawing maximum current when you're just idling. So I use the switch on the dash to turn it on and off for when I'm on the highway. I've got plenty of revs, plenty of airflow over the alternator to keep it cool. They come standard with a 90 amp 24 volt alternator. And that uh, DC DC charger sets it down to 12 volt. In the front, uh, up here in the front on the passenger side, I've got another little charge station. It's just got a heap of USB outlets, a little button there to isolate it. And uh, this is just where we charge. Uh, GoPro batteries, gimbal batteries, telephones, and that just sits there. It's pretty handy. Uh, front seats are licensed to seat three, so the machine can suit seven people uh, if I didn't have that rear charge station in. Uh, up in the driver's seat. Got a 40 channel U unit in UHF there. Uh, I've got a little heads there, gives me inside and outside temperatures. So, yeah, I've got another little charger up in there that comes through the side and charges the uh, iPad um, uh, so I can drive along using Google Maps or Hammer Maps or whatever you want. So, that's handy. Good solid mount. I've utilised the uh, old rear vision mirror mounting holes there with a couple of, couple of bolts holding that on there. Uh, down here on the dash we've got on the right hand side all the switches for our work lights, our LED lights, our halogen lights and both air compressors. Both air compressors can be activated from there. Got an idle button there to turn the idle up. Uh, here we've got headlights and we've also got cruise control to set. Uh, you've got electric mirror adjustment down in there. This turns on your cruise control on and off. You've got a manual DPF button, you've got a hill of start button, you've got a heated mirror button and you've got your four wheel drive and low and high range buttons here. Um, onto this touch screen. Uh, this has got reversing cameras on it. Currently in reverse, I'll take it out and it'll come back to radio. I can push the home button, hit setup, system, TPMS, and that gives us our tire pressure temperature monitoring system. So that tells me the temperature and pressure in all the tyres on the truck, plus my spare tyres. And if I was to connect that tandem trailer over there, that would I could put TPMS on that as well. And you know the temperature and the pressure of all your tyres when you're travelling down a highway. Really important, I think. Um, you've also got uh, navigation. I was easily navigation. Uh, on this. I, I don't like it to drive to but it's handy if you're in cities uh, that you don't really know, you're not familiar with uh, because you can put in your truck weight, your truck height, your truck length and set your course and it won't take you, to, you know, along roads that have got low bridges or along roads that are weight restricted, uh, things like that. Uh, also you've got your reversing cameras here this truck you can set up four cameras. So I've only got two. Uh, AA camera, I think as I said before, it would be looking straight down at the tow bar so you can back up to a trailer. Uh, B camera is the one that I drive along with when I've got the camper on the back or, or the canopy on the back uh, just so I can see behind me. Uh, apart from that you've got your air conditioning here. You've got your left and right fuel tank button there. Uh, so you just flick that to go from left or right fuel tank. This is the switch that I use for the 2412 DC DC charger to turn it on and off. And that's about it. 
uh, probably the major advantage of touring around in one of these trucks is you get to see so much because you're up so high. It's fantastic. Like if you're on a trip to Cairns instead of looking at a green wall for four or five hours of sugar cane, you, you're looking over the top of the sugar canes and you can get a view. So you see a lots, lots more. Even driving down a suburb instead of looking at fences, you're looking over the top of them. And uh, yeah, you get to see a fair bit more. Uh, moving right along. So, I think there's a lot more to go through. Um, until we put that camper on the back. So, as it sits there, I just use it every day to get the bits and pieces around town that I need. Uh, it's doing about 20, 21 and a half litres per 100 empty and fully loaded at seven and a half tonne with the camper on the back, be three litres per 100. Uh, do you think I've missed anything there, Kara? Oh, there's a just a couple of other little modifications. Uh, well, one other modification is these front mud flaps because of the wheel track. I've just extended those out 85 mil here. Um, it's just to stop, as you can see, stone chips up that fuel tank and stone chips everywhere. And you don't want stones getting thrown up at your at your house batteries. Probably should have a plastic cover over the top of it. Uh, the other thing that I failed to mention is that um, as, you, as you're driving along, this has all been soundproofed, so you don't get... So it's got tar paper and then half inch foam. I think you can see it there. So you don't get motor noise or fan noise because you're sitting, you know, your motor's right there. You're sitting on your motor and your fan. And without that, without that heat proofing and soundproofing, you do get uh, the motor noise and the howl of the fan in the truck, but the front and rear of the cab is both uh, heat and soundproof. In fact, you can see it here where that cover's missing, which is sitting in the shed somewhere. Uh, these are little compartments where you, because these cabs don't tilt on the on the dual cabs, these are little compartments where you access things like uh, there's your main uh, fuel filter there and up on the roof over here you have the internal self I go aerial I think it's capable of five um, phones or iPads uh, connection can connect to five and that'll take your signal from one bar to full strength they're pretty impressive but they're not cheap, they're, they're a thousand dollar bit of kit. Anyway, that's... That's a bit of a walk around on the truck. Um, there's the, the air compressor. That's the big air from Sherpa. That's a bit more about the truck. We'll probably do another walk around uh, once we put that camper on over there. We'll have a look at how it all interacts with each other. So that's the truck with the van slide on camper on the back of it. And that's how we'll be going around Australia. That's my wife's company, Friendship Herbals. And we'll be taking all her stock of balms, and herbal teas and bath teas and soaps, etc. Yeah, so check out the link below if you want to see the full range of products at friendshipherbals.com. And keep your eyes peeled in 2022 as we'll be traveling around Australia and we'll be at a markets near you. Cool. So next video I'll give you a rundown how we're going to store all that uh, in this van and what's in this van and how it all is going to work. Until then, see you next time.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, things had better come round soon. 